What's up fellow key shooters? Today we're gonna to be rendering this hot glue gun you see on screen. I'm gonna walk you through this as fast as I possibly can. Uh, you can watch this in slow motion if you need to or hit the pause button or watch it multiple times if you need to. But the goal here is to deliver as much value in as little time as possible. And this is gonna be all for complete beginners. But if you've been using Keyshot for a while, I think you might learn a few tips and tricks along the way. So grab a cup of coffee, pull open Keyshot and join me. And if you want to follow along, you'll want to head on over to willgibbons.com slash downloads. Uh, link will be down in the description. Uh, pop your email address in, hit submit, enter the vault, and get your tutorial files to follow along. Once you open the downloads folder, you should see your uh, hot glue gun model and a label that we're going to use. And without further ado, let's get on into Keyshot. All right, I've got Keyshot open. If you want your window to look exactly like mine, uh, the secret is go up to workspaces in the upper left hand corner down to default and then go ahead and set it to dark theme. That is literally it. All right, click on the left side of Keyshot. We're going to uh, grab our files, grab that uh, hot glue gun step file, drag it into Keyshot. We will accept the default import settings. Left click and drag to tumble your camera around the scene. Click on the scroll wheel and drag to pan up and down left or right and then use the scroll wheel to dolly in and out closer and further from your model. The first thing that you're noticing is our model is centered, which means we're not pivoting around the glue gun. We can do one of two things to fix this. We can right click on the model and say set camera target, or we could go to edit, add geometry, and we can add a cube to the middle of our scene. We can go ahead and then grab our model, the scene tree, we'll grab our super glue gun, and we'll go to position, and we'll hit move and we can go ahead and move that so it aligns with the cube. Now it's in the middle of the world. We can tell the cube to delete itself. All right, and we are rocking and rolling. So first things first, we're gonna set up our aspect ratio. Let's go up to window, or sorry, image, resolution, landscape, 16 by nine. And let's go ahead and throw down some materials. We're gonna search for a hard, rough black plastic, drag that onto the main part of the hot glue gun. We're also gonna throw that same material on the cord. Uh, do we wanna link them? No, we do not. Um, let's go ahead and double click on the one we put on the cord and let's set its roughness to 0.1 so it's a little glossier. We will shift left click to copy that, shift right click to paste and link that to this middle piece here. All right, for this little uh, stand down here, I'm going to search for a, uh, let's just search for a polished um, brass. Oh, and you'll notice that these two changed together. I don't want that. So I'm gonna select this uh, nozzle, right click, unlink material, and we're gonna find a polished chrome. Throw that guy on there. There we go, looking better. Um, and then this guy, let's go ahead and uh, turn this into a cloudy plastic. Go to the material type and change it to plastic cloudy. And then let's go ahead and set that color. Um, I'd like this to be kind of more of a standard uh, red. So I'll go ahead and um, drag this guy around till I'm happy with my color. Um, I'm thinking a little bit more saturated. There we go. And I'll save this color by dragging it down into this box here. I'll hit okay. And then let's go ahead and find some material for our glue stick. So let's search for a cloudy plastic. And let's find the rough white version and put that on the glue stick. Looking pretty good. This material can take a while to render. So if it seems kind of grainy or noisy, uh, it just takes time. You could use a rough glass instead if you if your computer needs uh, the help with that. Okay, um, I want to take this little inner part and kind of make it like an accent. So I'll double click on it and let's change its color to that same red material. Ah, and we have the cord going too. Let's actually um, let's actually hit cancel. We will right click and unlink this material so it's not going to affect the cord. We'll double click the barrel. I will change the color to that red. All right, this thing is looking 
as a very bright red. I might darken that just a hair. That's looking maybe even 80%. Alrighty. So now let's go ahead and address this, uh, this little piece down here. I want some cool kind of discoloration that comes from heat. So we're gonna hold Alt, left click to hide everything else. Let's go ahead and uh, get into the material graph here. So double click on this guy, go to the material graph. Let's go ahead and right click in the empty area and get a texture color gradient. We're going to hit C and we see the effects of this on the part. Then we wanna go and set the uh, center to part. And now we see a, a black to white gradient. Let's hit move texture. Let's rotate this a little bit. Now we wanna add some other colors in here. So I'm gonna drag the black up and set this black to kind of like a orangish color. And then let's just double click on the gradient to add another color drop and double click the color drop. And let's go with kind of a magenta, purpley, reddish color. And then let's go ahead and double click again to add another color stop. I'm going into kind of a dark blue. And lastly, I'll do it. The final one will be like a light blue, like really, really light. There we go. And I want to scrunch this down. So I'll take the scale and make it smaller. And let's hit uh, move texture and pull this down toward the tip a little bit. And if we go ahead and uh, hit C on color gradient to get out of that and plug it into the color of the metal, nothing happens. Uh, let's double click our metal and change it from measured to color mode. There we go, looking better. If those colors are too much, we can click on the connector, right click, utilities, um, color adjust, and set this guy to a saturation of 0.7, maybe to knock it back a little bit. Now, I wanna do something else cool here, but we need better lighting. So let's go into our environments library and double click the three panel straight 4K. So we can see what this material is gonna look like in a nice high contrast environment. It's too glossy. I wanna add some kind of natural looking roughness. So we're gonna to go to our textures tab. We're gonna find a cool texture. Let's go into uh, bump maps and I'll go to uh, maybe friction, and I'm gonna drag this right into the material graph. Let's go ahead and we can plug this into the roughness of the metal, and we can see what it looks like. It's too rough right now, so let's go ahead and we'll click on this uh, texture map button, hit C to preview it, and what we're seeing is white is gonna be rough, black is gonna be glossy, so I wanna invert this texture. So let's go ahead and um, for now, We'll right click and go down to utilities. So we're right clicking on that connector down to utilities. We're gonna use a color to number. This one's a little confusing. I'll do a separate tutorial on this later, but let's swap the zero and one value down below to invert that. And let's actually take the output to that's set to zero. Let's say 0 0.01, 0 0.02 maybe, 0 0.03. There we go. And let's take that output from and take it down to 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. There we go, I'm thinking that's good. Just enough to show that it's got some grit going on in there. All right, we're gonna close this material graph. Right click, show all parts. We're looking pretty good here. The last thing I wanna do is throw a label on the side, a nice fat sticker. So if we go to our downloads, that super glue label, we gotta throw that guy on there, super gluer. I'm gonna drag this onto the part into Keyshot and add it as a label. Now you'll notice this is not mapping properly. And I wanna show particularly how to get this label in the right position because this is not a perfect shape. This is a pretty complex shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the green checkbox. We're gonna set the mapping type to cylinder. And it looks wonky. Uh, we're gonna hit the move texture button and try fit to either X, Y, or Z. And uh, X is fine, it makes the cylinder shape um, kind of aligned with our barrel. So from a side view, I'm gonna basically drag the green, and then I'm gonna rotate this just by eye into position. And you'll notice that the orange uh, cylinder is too big. So let's go to our diameter and shrink this guy down to match the barrel of the glue gun. And it's a little bit, um, yeah, there we go. We're just kind of going by eye. That's good enough. And now we wanna rotate 
and scale this guy. So let's uncheck the use DPI for size and just scale down the width so it's smaller. And then let's go to angle UV and type in 90 to rotate this. And it's on the wrong side. So let's rotate this around our, our drill or glue gun here. Let's see a little bit further. That's the green arrow or circle I'm, I'm clicking and dragging. Now it's too big still. Let's take the width down. I don't know what happened with that guy, but let's go ahead and hit the green checkbox. There we go. Super gluer. Awesome. So let's go ahead and do one other thing. I want to make this all uh, kind of color coordinated. So let's go to our label. And at the bottom, we're going to click this under color. We're going to click this black box and, and select our red, our red color. We'll hit OK. And if we click blend with color, you'll see it is now that vibrant red that we saved before. Um, now you can see it's a nice glossy label on a matte part. Um, let's go ahead and talk about making this label a little thicker. So by that, I mean we're going to hold Alt and drag this uh, graphic into the bump channel so we see a little bit of a raised edge. And it's too much, so we're going to scroll down to bump height and set that to 0.5. And now we see just a bit of a bit of an edge, like a like a sticker or a decal. Um, now we could go a little bit crazier with some texturing. We could double click on this plastic, go down to textures, right click on bump, and then add a noise fractal. And uh, we could set that down to maybe one and the bump height to maybe 0.15. So now we've got this nice toothy kind of uh, texture on there, which looks really good for realism. And uh, last but not least, our label super glossy. Uh, this is a bit more of an advanced technique, but we could go ahead and either check the apply bump to labels. Now we see the label underneath it, but now that label looks uh, too bumpy. So if we really want to get away with uh, uh, doing something cool here, we can turn this off, pop into the material graph, and we see our, our material. So this is our uh, black plastic, and our label is down below. What I want to do is actually take this noise fractal texture and have it apply our plastic label. But we already have the bump from the uh, um, kind of graphic. So we're going to click the connector, right click and say utilities bump add. And we're going to take the noise fractal into bump number two, double click bump add and take the weight, which is number two, down a little bit. So let's look closely at what happens on the sticker when I do this. I'll take this down to 0 0.5, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. So now we have just a subtle effect, like the sticker's got some thickness and it's resisting the bump from underneath it. Pretty cool here. Uh, okay, we're looking pretty good now. This is, uh, this is you know, we're pretty much it. You guys are rock stars. So uh, last thing I see is this glue stick is not yellow enough. Hot glue for some reason usually looks a little yellow. So I'll choose a yellow color and set this to maybe 3% uh, saturation, something like that. And then, um, Man, if we really wanted to color coordinate, we could take this gold foot stand, just choose color, and let's pull our color from here again. Now we're looking like super limited edition, I don't know, something cool. Background, we need to change the background. So let's go to our environment. Let's go to color mode and change that background color to something a little darker. Uh, now to fix the weird shadows on the ground, I'm gonna hit Control G to hit a ground plane, to put a ground plane down below there. There we go, looking pretty good, huh? That's pretty much it. Let's talk about our render settings. We're gonna go to our lighting tab and make sure we're in product mode. That'll make these cloudy plastic materials look a little bit better. That's pretty much all we have to worry about. Let's go to our render settings here. We're gonna go and set our format to PNG. Um, we're going to render this out at uh, 1920 by um, 1080. This aspect ratio is going to follow the aspect ratio you have on screen in your real-time view, so be aware of that. Um, let's go ahead and set up our camera before we finalize this. I'm going to go to our camera tab. Let's go ahead and add a camera, and we're going to kind of set up our view the way we want it. This is going to be my, my super juicy thumbnail for this uh, tutorial, so I'm going to make this nice and big. And maybe, so we have our nice highlight on the edge of the sticker. It's looking good. And I think what we'll do is we, we might go to our lens settings and set instead of 50 for my perspective, we'll maybe do something like 70 to kind of make this a little more conservative here. Pretty sweet, huh? 
And last but not least, if you want some of that juicy depth of field, you're gonna wanna click on the depth of field button, select focal point, click on the part you wanna be sharp and in focus, a super gluer. Let's go ahead and take our f-stop up to like maybe five or eight, you know, just a little bit. Um, maybe, maybe 10. That looks good. We'll go ahead and hit done. I need to hit save on my camera, so I'll click save. Back to our render settings. We are going to render our PNG. I'm gonna name this Super Gluer Tutorial. And it's gonna go into my renderings folder. Note this location. That's where you're going to uh, find the uh, rendering when it's done. Lastly, let's go to our render options. If I wanna know how much to render this out to, I'll hit H on the keyboard to bring up my heads up display. You can see my, my samples are going up as time passes and this is still fuzzy. So, uh, and also my, my cloudy plastics are still a little bit cloudy looking. So I basically wanna let this number go um, until this looks better. Now, I can use a region render to draw a small box around a problem area. And this way I can very quickly not waste time letting the samples number go up. So I can see now it's jumping up super fast. So I can take down this number when I'm happy with the way that looks and that's gonna become my number I use for my samples. So in this case, maybe I'll do 500 samples since I'm not in a hurry. Um, then I'm gonna go ahead and I can either add this to my render queue or I can go ahead and just start rendering it. Now, if you add it like this, you're gonna see you have just a, reg uh, a region. We don't want that. So let's go back and make sure we do not accidentally render out a region only. That would be sad. And if we're ready to render, we'll go ahead and hit render. <laughs> Easy as that. So if that was helpful, guys, please leave a comment down below and give me a thumbs up. To hear about future tutorials, click subscribe and smash that bell icon too. Happy rendering, and I will see you guys next time.